Trenton, how are the numbers 37, 1, and 2021 connected? Um, I don't know. Oscar's eating 37 number ones from in now in 2021 so far? I hope not. No, President Biden signed 37 executive orders during week one of his 2021 presidency. And these executive orders just keep on coming. Wow, that's a lot. What are those executive orders for? Well, many of the president's executive orders are reversing the Trump administration's most controversial and unpopular policies, including reversing the transgender military ban, the Muslim ban, and revoking the Keystone Pipeline permit. President Biden also signed executive orders rejoining the Paris Climate Accord and the World Health Organization. So you're saying with a signing of a pen, Biden could just make new laws? Like, about anything? Kind of, although I'm not entirely sure. So let's head to Oscar to learn more about executive orders in this week's edition of Next Gen Politics. Hey everyone, I'm Oscar, and welcome to Next Gen Politics. Trenton and Giovanna, you came to the right place. Today, I'm gonna give you a free civics lesson. I can't wait for this civics lesson. <laughs> Me too, I love civics. So, what exactly is an executive order, you ask? Well, according to the American Bar Association, an executive order is a signed, written, and published directive from the President of the United States that manages operations of the federal government. Essentially, these executive orders interpret laws and tell the government how to work. While executive orders are not laws, they are enforced as such and don't need congressional approval. Presidents sign executive orders because getting a law passed is no easy feat. You remember that Schoolhouse Rock song, I'm Just a Bill? I'm just a bill, yes I'm only a bill, and I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Yeah, so like Giovanna and Trenton said, bills can just sit on Capitol Hill. But according to Article 2 of the Constitution, which establishes the President's power, they can use executive action to get things done without Congress. That being said, the courts have the power to invalidate executive orders if they believe there is a breach of power or if the order is unconstitutional. Additionally, when a new president is elected, they can eliminate any existing executive order they want. Talk about power. So what kinds of executive orders do presidents issue? Well, sometimes they're used in times of emergencies when quick decisions must be made or as a way to create, expand, or take away the power of federal agencies. But now, let's take a look at three of the most important executive orders ever. First up, we have the Emancipation Proclamation. In 1863, President Lincoln signed this executive order that freed the slaves of the Confederate States. Next up, in 1933, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed the New Deal, which was crucial for relief, recovery, and reform following the Great Depression. And in 1957, President Dwight D. Eisenhower used an executive order to protect black students from racial violence and protesters as they made their way into a formerly segregated high school in Little Rock, Arkansas. Not all executive orders had a positive impact on the country, though. In 1942, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed an executive order forcibly moving Japanese Americans into internment camps. These are just four of the executive orders from history. On average, U.S. presidents have signed 300 executive orders during their term, but FDR signed 3,721 executive orders. Remember, he served four terms as president, though. Overall, executive orders are a quick way for presidents to solve problems. But this solution is like a band-aid because without an official law, the next president or Congress can easily remove it. Well, now I know how the numbers 37, 1, and 2021 are connected. 
and I'm going to be paying much more attention to the executive orders President Biden is signing. Yes, Oscar, thanks for the civics lesson. I not only learned about executive orders, but also how much power the president has. Well, I'm glad I can help. You know what? Wait, maybe I should be a civics professor. I'm pretty good at this. Anyways, for now, I'm Oscar, and thanks for tuning in to Next Gen Politics.